So we're going to do an overview of Simplify 3D. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a service provider, right? They do slicing for multiple machines, which is really wonderful. So one of the students needed this object printed for earrings. So you can just drag and drop it into the interface. And then if the object is really small or really large, usually it knows that it's an inches to millimeters problem. So this is a pretty big object for an earring. We need to select the object and then select the scale feature so that we can shrink it down. However, this is not precise. You don't necessarily know the size of your object. So if you want to know how big it is, you can just double click the object itself and then decide how tall or how wide you want this object to be. So we're going to scale it in the z-axis, which you can do by just clicking down manually, or in the bar, just typing the actual final dimensions you want. So we're going with 10 millimeters. And then just select Done. And the object is selected. We're going to just copy and paste it. And then because we have both, we can select Move and manually move them to the center of the platform. Or you can click the center and arrange bit, which will do it automatically. Um, one of the nice parts about this is when you go to prepare to print, you can actually see a generation of your toolpath. So uh, you can speed through the max min to watch it print, or you can you know press play and watch it do it manually at whatever speed setting that you have. Okay. One of the nice parts you can find is how long your build time is going to be, how much filament length you're going to have and how much plastic it's going to weigh. However, if you're planning on casting these in metals, that's not going to give you the volumetric calculation you need. So you do need to find the volume of the object, not necessarily the plastic weight. And you can do that by either telling it to print solid or finding that information elsewhere. One of the cool parts about Simplify 3D is you can actually use the tools, right, the machine control panel to drive your um, X, Y, and Z axis on your machine. So that information is located here in the jog controls, and you can just go negative X, negative Y, or positive X, positive Y in 0 0.1, 1, 10, or 100 millimeters at a time. You can also set the speeds of your X, Y axis, your Z axis, and your extruder. You can test for homing in individual axis, X, Y, and Z, or you can home all. This is all done communicating through your serial port, which is some form of USB cable. And the older machines used to run at what I call 11D5200. Uh, the more modern machines are running at the 250,000 baud rate. But if you're having trouble communicating with your machine, make sure that you're in the right serial port. So dev.cu, Bluetooth is a very common one. But they'll have usually like some numbers like 141 or whatever. And that's just to indicate which bot you're talking to. So this is all originally based off of, um, I think it's Clement Kip did this on an interface called Pronerface. So this is Ultimaker support referencing Pronerface for calibrating your machine. And then, if I remember correctly, bah, 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 bah. hello, here we go. This is the old Pronerface website. So it's still around, Pronerface.com. And I don't know what happened to them, but the interface that we have in Simplify 3D is distinctly familiar, uh, reminiscent of Pronter Face. So it's one of those things where I just want to let people know that it exists. Yeah, here we go. Clement print run dot git. If you're trying to find this uh, for a slicing engine and just general calibration, it's out there. Okay. So this is Ultimaker referencing it. This is where you can find the machine control panel and that's how you calibrate. So once you have all your settings done, you just click Save Toolpath to Disk, and then this is two skunk earrings, and uh, we're gonna just say it's 10 millimeters, and two shells at 10%, and then just save this uh, for the G3 DREM file. 